Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. It's such a pleasure to be here. Today's show is going to be amazing. I've been waiting a couple of months for this. It feels like a date that was supposed to happen. It's just the timing wasn't right, but it is today. So this show has been nominated for Two People's Choice Podcast Awards for a Webby Award and was written up in Welp Magazine recently as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. So if you're listening to it, you're listening to one of the best. I'm so grateful you're here and I'm so grateful for the recognition. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do beautiful energy work out into the world. So if you want to become a facilitator or you want to take one of their classes anywhere online or live, go to Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R dot com or Access Consciousness. Dot com. I'm Debbie Dashinger, and I teach business owners, entrepreneurs, and healers the time-effective steps to write a highly engaging book. I also have a company that does a fully done for the author process, which is taking the author's book to a guaranteed international bestseller. And the third leg of my visibility hub is that I show you how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and get massive results. I've got a gift for you should you want to learn how to be more visible in your being and your business and get more exposure for what you do. There are templates, there are videos, and more. Go to debbie-inger.com slash gift. That's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. So yes, today is all about a healer who works specifically with inherited emotional DNA that manifests in people in things such as fears or sabotaging patterns or belief systems. Now these can include fear of success, procrastination, fear of public speaking, anxiety, limiting money beliefs, relationship issues and drama, business stagnation, and much more. My guest is back for a second time, Lisa Thomas. She's a transformational healer, an intuitive coach, and an energy practitioner. Lisa has helped thousands of people worldwide to achieve their business and life goals through her group programs, her private coaching, her products, and her soul awakening method called certification, certification soul awakening method for healers. Lisa has been featured on Good Morning La La Land, Ali and You, this show previously, Inspired Conversations, Spirit Purpose Energy, as well as many stages and podcasts. Her book, Mistakes Into Money, is available on Amazon. And if you'd like to learn more about Lisa Thomas, go to lisathomasenergyhealing.com. And with that, I bring the amazing... Lisa Thomas to the show. It's so great to have you. I am so happy to be here. We've been waiting. You and I, we love each other and we've just been waiting for this conversation and I'm excited to have it. It's so perfect. Here we are on a new year and whatever everybody went through last year, I want to talk about your healing process. I know it's incredibly powerful and unique. So tell people, what do you do specifically for groups? What do you do for private clients? And give us a little bit What is it like inside of you while you do the work? What do you see and know? Well, people's bodies give me the information. But let's first define kind of the genius zone that I love thriving in. And that is based on our ancestors. So we inherit our our specific DNA code that's unique to us. And we can't change that. We can't change how tall we are, right? But within our DNA is how our epigenetics expresses itself. And that's all based on the life experiences of our ancestors. And so how they experience life often shows up for how we're going to experience life also. And they're called informational tags. And these, there's no fault to our ancestors because we inherit a lot of wonderful things from them, right? Our gifts and our talents. But we also inherit fear. If they had a trauma, we might have the same fear around something that has nothing to do with what's manifested in our life. We might just be afraid and, or have anxiety. And those types of things can be released. So I love that. And then the other thing that I found is, is how we identify ourselves as an individual. 
And that's based on how we interact with the world around us. And we've pretty much decided that by the time we're seven, eight years old. And what I love helping people understand is that isn't necessarily your truth. It's how you interpreted it to be your truth and who you were. So if you had a parent that quieted you, then as an adult, quite often you will feel uncomfortable speaking up for yourself. So you'll let others make decisions for you, things like that. And those, those identifying patterns kind of lead to who I am anyway, right? And so I love releasing them. I love empowering people from all walks of life. Did you create this method, Lisa, or is this yeah. something that you learned? Mm -mm. So I've studied different holistic things, but what I found during my process as I was growing as a, as a healer, right? I was like, you, we don't just get, we aren't just born into something. We have to learn to say yes to things, try things. And especially in my style, that's what happened for me. And then over the years, I just created and found things, ways, tools that I could go deeper with my clients. And that's what I've created. In fact, that was the win for me for COVID is 2020, I trademarked the method so that I could help other people because there's only one me. And I'm not, I'm not even saying, Debbie, I'm not the best healer in the world. I'm not the best facilitator, but I'm good at what I do. And if I can teach other people, then we can help one person at a time. And that's what makes, that's what's going to help our planet. That's what's going to heal us. It's not a global healing. It's one person at a time. Mm -hmm. Indeed. So talk about what are the kind of things that you have found that repeat in somebody's life? What are the patterns or what are the frequencies that keep repeating that mm -hmm. most of us are really unaware of, but boy, would we not prefer? Well, you'll be aware of them, especially as you get older, because you just, it kind of just seems to be who you are. So let's take money, for example. Money is a big inherited thing, whether it's the belief around if you're evil with money and everybody that has money is evil and they did, you know, they were selfish and greedy to get there. You know, those are things that get passed down in the cell memory. So then if that's the case, then subconsciously, you're going to be really uncomfortable making more money than what your set limit is, because you're going to be afraid of the opinions and judgments of others. And one, you know, something that I found in someone's lineage is that they had ancestors that had been killed because of their money. Now, we don't have that happen so much, maybe in Batman, right? That comes about, but it's not something we are, the common people are actually thinking about. But you see, this got passed down and what happened was they couldn't make decisions, right? Because they always had a fear of people, you know, like being visible to people. It really complicated their life. So we, there are things that are in our operating system that we don't know where they came from, we just are. So another perfect example that would lead to that yeah, underneath that would be the fear of spiders. That's a really basic one. In fact, I have a video on my website about it. We can have a fear of spiders since we're children. And yet there isn't any reason. We're just born with a fear of spiders. Well, that's because you could have had a great, great, great ancestor, grandfather, grandmother that did get, say, bit while chopping wood out there. They got bit by a black widow and your grandfather, great grandfather, you know, got really, really sick. Well, that fear and the panic around that would get passed down. And so that might lend to why you have a fear of spiders, but it can go into anything, Debbie. Yeah, makes sense. So with somebody who's dealing with something and they're saying, you know, there's this recurring life experience or maybe several of them, mm -hmm. I really am done. I'd love to work with somebody to just end this noise in my life, yeah. create something beautiful. How would they actually delineate? How would they know, ah, oh, this must be epigenetics or no, it's not inherited. This is me. We can get tripped up in our own stuff where we feel like we have to figure it out. So the first step is not to just own the fact that you don't have to know. You know, somebody like me can help you do that. And your body will give me the information to tell me what side it's inherited on and how many generations it goes back. And if it is just you, well, then that lends to, you know, why, have, why do we repeat the cycle, right? 
And so those learned behaviors that we've had since a child or the things that have gotten trapped in our own life where we feel like we're held back because the love of our life betrayed us. And so now all people in our life are going to betray us, right? Those things are really impactful. And we can, this is the deal, we can consciously know that we shouldn't be a certain way. We can consciously think we can will ourselves, and that's really hard to do. That's why resolutions, right? 92% of the population will set a resolution. And by the time that February comes, they're done with them. Only 8% of population will actually complete a resolution for a year. 8% of us, that's it. You're muted. Debbie, you're muted. Yeah, that's, sorry, pretty sad. We have a dog in the house, so I'm also yeah. being very aware of that. Um, that's pretty sad. And um, yeah. yeah, I haven't done, or I haven't done some kind of resolution in so long. I've got a word of the year that I'm really- I love that. Of. Yeah, and mine for this, and I'm happy to broadcast and be visible, it is sovereignty. It is, you know, me really mm -hmm. fully wings out flying <clears throat> like my domain, me being me. Yeah. And oh. you owning your power because you're, you're, you're a woman full of, um, like you have a lot to offer the world, Debbie, you have a lot of power. Like you have a lot of integrity of a lot of resolution that you want to help other people ha impact their life. So you being sovereign allows you to stand in this beautiful truth of yours and impact other people in a positive way. Nice. Thank you. I want to give, <clears throat> excuse me, people a little bit of, this is something that you posted. <clears throat> okay. I copy and stole because I thought this was so amazing. Okay. I want to give you an idea of what Lisa's talking about. It's called ancestral mathematics. In yeah. order to be born, you needed two parents, four grandparents, eight great grandparents, 16 second great grandparents, 32 third great-grandparents, 64 fourth great-grandparents, 128 fifth great-grandparents, 256 sixth great-grandparents, 512 seventh great-grandparents, 1,024 eighth great-grandparents, 2,048 ninth great-grandparents. For you to be born today from 12 previous generations, you needed a total of 4,094 ancestors over the past 400 years. Mama Mia, do you want to talk about struggles and battles and difficulties and sadness and happiness and love and hope for the future and what, what we each underwent? Like, God bless them. They got us here, right? They were yeah, They did. We're, but, we're grateful, right? They also, there were even some garbage and, and trauma and issues yes. of the time with them. There is. Like, what about just going through war? How's that going to show up for us now in this time? It's going to, for many people, it's going to make what's happening in our era right now, our dimension, really fearful. So these types of people that inherited a lot of this um, trauma from war are going to be very fearful in the world right now. They're going to wake up with anxiety because our politics are, might seem, right, like they're falling apart. It's, the, it's how it, the world is appearing right now. It can, warlike energy can show up in our interpersonal relationships where we feel like we have to fight and defend ourselves for everything we want. These things really do impact us. Mm -hmm. we're, I know we're going to be taking some folks who are coming to you for a mini healing during the show. Okay. And I think the first question I have for you is, is everybody who is listening or watching going to be able to experience the healing as well? Or is it specifically for the person calling in? That's a great question. So I do do group healings. All right. And we can set this up like that. So when I when I access, right, if anyone that's listening, okay, just responds with a yes out loud, your subconscious will connect to what I'm saying and will find how it shows up in your life, in your body, and will release it. Consciously, you might go, yeah, I don't really have that issue. But you know what? If you can remain unattached to being just like what you experience, you'll be surprised that the subconscious will find how it does show up for you. So it might, that we might talk to somebody about a personal relationship, but it might be showing up for someone else in their business dynamics at work. Okay. And so if somebody, and we're just going to take audio, just so folks know, we're not going to do, which I think is kind of cool that you can. I think it's cool. 
Yeah. yeah. This, I this, have no problem with that. <laughs> I know you're the real deal, but this is like great for anybody listening or watching. So when somebody, we'll call it calls in, mm -hmm. uh, what is it specifically that you need or want from them? You know, I'd like to know like a, a little bit about them. Like, are you single? Are you in a relationship? Do you work? Are you unemployed? You know, what is, what is something that you can, we can do it a couple of ways. You can tell me what's like a, like a pattern that keeps repeating and I can hone in on that. Okay. Or you can say, tell me something you'd like to have go easier or in your life. Now, if somebody calls and tells me they want they want to hit the jackpot financially, then we're going to go back and ask questions anyway, because are you employed? Are you retired? Um, right. Like there's there's a somebody once said to me, Lisa, you're like Tinkerbell. And I want to say, no, I'm not like Tinkerbell. Right. Tinkerbell has a magic wand. I don't have that because there's some realistic things. If somebody is really struggling financially and they're 82 years old. Right and they're not working there. I, I can't, I can't release something to create more that way. You with me? Like I, okay. All right. There's some realism here, but I could help that individual not feel so frightened about not having more. Awesome. Okay. Okay. That's clear. So we're going to bring on the first person and um, we're bringing Beth audio only onto the show. And uh, Beth, you want to turn off your... Hi, Beth, but I do like seeing you, dear. Oh, there you, there you go. I and get Beth, to see you. Hopefully, I'm going to let Lisa take over, but I also want to just repeat for anybody and everybody what she said, you're going to give her your name. Well, we know that now. Mm -hmm. uh, single or in a relationship, any negative pattern that keeps repeating that you're like, I'm done with, or something easier you prefer. And you're going to tell a little wee bit about yourself. And I am going to really just honor everybody who's able to do that in a short amount of time. So Lisa can get in the most healing for you. So welcome to Dare to Dream, Beth. It's great to have you. Hi, Thank Beth. you. Hi, I'm so honored to be here. Thank you. Me too. Okay. So tell me, um, tell me what you do for a living. I own my own business and I primarily help people find their shadow work, uh, they find their shadow work, find their life purpose by uh, dealing with the resistance to that purpose. Absolutely. Okay. Um, you know, it's Abraham Lincoln that said, I don't like that individual. That means I get to know them. That's right. It means I get the, I, I need to get to know them. And it's the same thing with our shadow. We need to get to know our shadow. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love your purpose. Mm -hmm. All right. Talk to me. Tell me what's going on. So I would assess myself as being at this point in my life, pretty well integrated. I have uh, good relationships with my friends. My work is good. I have a very good relationship with my team in all these many years, 23 years in business. The only time people have left the team is if I've had to ask them to leave. And for the most part, it was amicable. Mm -hmm. So basically, I would consider myself pretty good at relating, except in my intimate life, I realized that I have consistently dated people who were dangerous um, and then tried to minimize their aggression by being a people pleaser. And now I'm very, very aware of this pattern. I've done a huge amount of clearing on it. Mm -hmm. And what I'm wondering about is mm -hmm. if you can help me to understand or release any other resistance I might be unconscious about towards romantic intimate love because i'm at a point now where i'm wondering is this even something i want or is it something <laughs> is it something i think i should want or is it just because in my entire life i haven't ever really had an intimate relationship where i felt emotionally safe and mm -hmm. of course from my childhood my feelings were always and pretty much invalidated not always but often especially negative emotions so yeah. i adapt did a very dysfunctional strategy that I do believe was the cause of the cancer that's now almost gone from my body. Congratulations. All of that emotion, thank you. All yeah. that emotional repression really yeah. led to a lot of dysfunction. So now I'm at a space of, okay, I really would like to have the experience of an intimate partnership. What is it that I don't, well, I don't know what I don't know. So anything you could help me with to further my healing around that and, and, um, be how about open. I, how about I yeah. help your healing? 
How about yes, I hope you? Okay. Yes, I love that. At this point, it's it it's a little bit deeper than an awareness. You're yeah. very bright, Beth, and your struggles from the past serve you to help others now. Yes. All right. So, like, don't ever, don't ever. I mean, you don't. But looking back is like just just really acknowledge where you are because it's a beautiful place that you're at, mm. and yeah, you've got people pleasing in there. It's generational. You also have the pain, right, of being marginalized is how I feel it, is the yes. right word, right? Yes. You're marginalized as a child. So your coping was to please. Yes. You also learned pleasing, right, from your yes. mother, okay? Yep. Like, okay. Yep. And very strong on that. And you might be surprised. I often find people pleasing on the men's, on the father's side for a daughter, oh, yeah. mother, but, oh, yeah, not, both. but not, but, but you, this particular thing that I'm honing in on is on your mother's side and, and it's, it's a coping in a sense. So how about I connect to you and start releasing this for you? Okay. I'd love that. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Accessing 100% spirit, accessing sabotages and accessing 100% soul for Beth. If you or anyone else, if you are in alignment with me connecting and releasing Beth, say yes out loud. Yes. Okay, beautiful. All right, let me tell you this. It's on your mother's side, goes back five generations, okay? Yes. So here we go. Releasing people pleaser. From your DNA tissues, fibers, and tapestry of your physical body. Releasing it from your mother. All generations going back five or more, releasing people pleaser across all levels and dimensions, past, present, future, releasing the pattern, Beth, of pleasing to cope, releasing the need to please in order to fit in with the environment that you're living in. And this is a lot of this at this point, Beth, is subconscious, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. It beca you become aware of it when you're in a relationship that mm -hmm. is selfish. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. And I, I'd like to help you here releasing the pattern of attracting charismatic partners that are emotionally unavailable. Yes. Bingo, girl. Bingo. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Yeah. You really do. And the thing is, is that you're charismatic. You have a beautiful light about you. Mm. So this is the deal. Okay. This is where the conscious mind comes in. If you go out with a guy, you're talking with him, you're getting coffee, whatever it is. Okay. And it's going to seem out of balance, but trust me here. And they at all remind you of somebody previously. I want you to just not go, not, not continue. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because then the vibrational energy will attract similar people. It can be a higher version of the previous person. Don't get That's me wrong. What it's, been. That's what it's been like a, the same dynamic, just yeah. more, better and better and better yeah. each time. Yeah. So. You got to stop it though. And that's what yep. you're going to do on the conscious level. Say, you know what? Yep. You're a great guy. You're just not my guy. We're not right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Own it. Okay. If it truly is right, it will come back around. You will not lose him. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I'm going to say it again to your body, releasing the pattern of attracting charismatic, charismatic men that are emotionally unavailable, that do not serve your highest good as you and replacing this and activating your gift of intuition, your gift of knowingness that you have, Beth, to trust your intuition, your gut instincts, and to know that it is in your divine right to be with a partner, with a man that serves your highest good, long-term duration. This is a long-term relationship and you are meant to love, meaning you are meant to share life and go through life with a partner. This individual needs to understand that you have a powerful work and it really accept you for who you are. And I, and I do believe that for you. I believe that is possible for you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. All right. How do you feel about that? I feel really good because my sister called me out on it last night and she <laughs> said, you need to at least open to the possibility Mm -hmm. Because I was a bit, I've been so shell shocked from from all of it, yeah. And 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 so I I actually today came to this place of well, I think I want it, but do I want it, or am I deluding myself? Like there were there just the questions I I I because there's been so much trauma and pain all the way back yeah. to childhood. 
Yeah. Um, Let me help you here. Very affirming. Very affirming. Yeah. Let me do one more thing for you because I didn't close the circuit here. Okay. Releasing being marginalized turned inward. Let that land. Releasing the pattern of being marginalized turned inward where you are marginalizing your own life, your own relationships, your own self, wherever you are holding yourself back. You with me? Wherever you are, wherever you are holding back because of a deeper subconscious fear of being hurt, of wasting time. You're over wasting time. You hate wasting time. Oh my gosh. You hate it. Yes, I do. And so (laughs) you're like over wasting time in a relationship that isn't going to work. You want a relationship that's going to work. So replacing that, you might see yourself for who you are, activating your soul's purpose, that divinity within you to trust that there are opportunities and good things happening for you, activating a high vibrational man into your life that sees you for who you are and values you for who you are. Mm, And now you are complete. Beautiful. Mm. Wow. Thank you. You're welcome. That was, you were beautiful. You're doing beautiful work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks, Beth, so much. Go enjoy that amazing, yummy space. Thank you, Beth. And I'm going to bring the next person on. Wow. I was so relishing that here and uh, feeling the, the energy of all of that. I, you know, it's interesting because I think we all have some of everybody. Yep. Even if that's not a predominant weakness or issue in our life, but still, there's still a space and a capacity to grow more into that, to mm-hmm. heal more, express right. more into that, be bigger in that space. So that's that, right. that was yummy. And that was cool. Cool. It so felt it, good to me too. Yeah. So you get it too when you do this. Well, yeah, I feel the release happening for them. Mm-hmm. And we are now bringing Barbara on. Hi, Barbara. Barbara. If you're there, say hello, say your name, and connect with Lisa. Hi, Hi. Barbara. Hi. Barbara, are you there? Speak up. Do you hear me? Yes, now we can. Thank you, love. Yes, we can. All right, Barbara, tell me a little bit bit about yourself. A a little bit. (laughs) Well, okay. um, Sure, you've had a um, a life noteworthy of sharing a big story here. Okay, I can tell that. But how about telling me where you are right now? Literally, I'm in uh, rural Brazil, and that's a big story in and of itself. Mm-hmm. And I have been in private practice, I believe, around 45 years, believe it or not. Doing? Uh, everything, various forms of counseling, shamanism, mm-hmm. neurolinguistics, um, and, and teaching classes, individuals, uh, and yeah. Perfect. Perfect. That helps me. And tell me what's, you know, what's going on for you right now? How can I help you? Well, I was trying to get it into simple, quick sentences. And I know I've experienced brilliance in my life, but right now I don't feel the brilliance and, and, um, and I'm having some problem with motivation. Yeah. And finally, a little bit about what's my niche because I've had I've I've gone through so much transformation over the years I've I've my private practice has always been fairly good Mm -hmm. so that's not the issue as much but it's now I feel like it's it's reinvention time and I'm um I'm not sure what my niche is Barbara you're a renaissance woman what I mean by that is Renaissance is, is something that comes to me when somebody knows a lot and they have a lot of information and they're gifted in a lot of different ways. And so what hap- can happen is when they reach this pinnacle where they've learned a lot and then they go, well, now what do I do? So you've experienced success. This isn't your, you, this isn't your first cycle of success, dearest. You've had success. You've, you've known that you've had that joy and that soul feeling of helping other people. You've been rewarded that way, right? And now, right. now it's like, in it's just let's just change the way you think about it. 
What makes me feel good is what I want. To, I want you to ask yourself, what make, gives me energy during the day when I do it? Because it's not so much one thing. It's more about, it's more the time that it is to honor what you really enjoy doing. Do you love the neuro-linguistics? Do you love the shamanism? You are a healer. That's the overriding arch here is you are a healer, right? And, right. and it comes, it's just natural for you. You understand people. And so because you can do many different things, where net going next is going to be defined by what feels good to you. When you get done with something, out, like rate it, Did you, does it feed you? Does it give you energy or does it deplete you? Because it's not that what depletes you is wrong per se, it's that there's something better. Because you're helping people with no matter what different thing you're doing. This is about, right. think of it this way. It's like um, whatever your belief is of God or universe or your angels, right? It's that, it's that time where it's now your time to really love what you're doing. And when, when you get into that zone and that alignment, right, then everything else will fall into place. Don't get tripped up because you're going to feel stuck if you're trying to figure it out. Start with what feels good to you right now. Dial it back, okay? Yep. Dial it back mm -hmm. to what feels good. To what feels good. What's not complicated? What doesn't, what doesn't cause you to wish you didn't have that appointment, right? So if you have an appointment coming up and you're like, man, I don't really wanna do this, well, boom, okay, that's a sign that that doesn't feel good. You can then say, is it the individual, is it the type of person that I'm working with? And it's no judgment on the individual, remember this. It's how you feel, what, what lights you up, what feeds your soul. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that will allow my brilliance to come back out. out Absolutely. Now I can connect and release some lack of motivation. You feel stuck. You also need to give yourself some grace, Barbara. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Just give yourself That's some grace on this. Mm -hmm. You've accomplished sure. a lot in your life. And, right. you, you know, you are where you are and just acknowledge that you're there. And now you get to think of it, you get to heal now. You get to rejuvenate. You, you get to align with things that feel good to you that bring your brilliance back. But you jumping into a bunch of thing, different things right now, meaning like you have to go from here to here in the next four months, isn't going to feel good to you. Your operating system isn't going to be on board with that. Correct. Mm -hmm. I'm clear it's been about that. <laughs> like not having power steering. Mm -hmm. no. Yep. Okay. Would you like me to help you release being unmotivated? Sure. Okay. All right. Here we go. Accessing 100% spirit, accessing 100% soul. If you are in agreement with me connecting and releasing, Barbara, say yes out loud. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, is I'm motivated, inherited. It is. Is it on your, is this on your mom's side? Um, hmm. Okay. Doesn't mean it showed up the same way, Barbara. All right. But it doesn't even, we don't even have to analyze it. Let me just clear it. Okay. Releasing okay. inherited unmotivated from the DNA tissues, fibers, and tapestry of your physical body. Releasing unmotivated from you physically as an exhaustion energy, a tired energy, a depleted energy where you feel depleted emotionally and in direction. Releasing the block of your clarity where you are unsure, where it causes you to second guess yourself and to hold back, releasing the indecisiveness uh, because of the, it's like the fear of what if, if I do this, what does this mean? 
I've been there. Do I do it again? Do I invest money? Do I not? There's a lot of what ifs going on. So releasing the complicated energy around that, where it's taking your energy from your cells and the space in between, releasing unmotivated as a lack of energy and a lack. It's what's happening right now is that gift of tenacity that you have, Barbara, is like dimmed right now. You you just it's it's, it's like. You're, it's quiet right now. So releasing the block to your gift of tenacity where you feel exhausted and tired. I am repeating myself on purpose. Releasing this on all levels and dimensions, past, present, future. Releasing unmotivated where it's holding you back or it's causing confusion and a feeling of being stuck. Releasing the feeling of being stuck. This is what I want you to hear, Barbara. You're actually not stuck. It's just that you need to be patient with the time of it coming to fruition for you, what this is. So it's going, things are going to happen. I'll help you here, replacing this with the high vibration of self-acceptance, acceptance of the situation, acceptance of where you are to acknowledge yourself and to trust that there are good things happening and will happen for you, activating internal patience, okay? And replacing this, that you might have clarity with an increase of motivation to just, just act, to live life, activating your zest for life, that you might feel passionate, that you might feel alive, that you might feel purposeful, that you might trust. Nah, that's your key word there. That you might trust that all is in divine order for you. You have not been forgotten, Barbara. Whatever that means for you, you have not been forgotten. And your time is not done. And your purpose is not done. Be in... Be at peace with that. Give yourself grace with everything that's happened and just, just know that things will things are going to sort themselves out. Okay? Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> absolutely. Absolutely lovely. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Those are good words to remember. Yeah. You're very Thank wise, Barbara. Don't overanalyze it. Okay? <laughs> okay. I'll try. That was a good okay. giggle. Thanks, right. Barbara. Oh, it's great. <laughs> that was beautiful. So nice how different everybody. All right. Thank Thanks you, Barbara. Steve. So we're gonna bring All in right. um, let's see, <clears throat> who well, we'll wait for someone else to pop in here. And uh I want to ask you, Lisa, while we're waiting, <laughs> how can we embrace I'm... our ask? Barbara, if you don't mind getting off, thank you. Um, how can we embrace our ask, Lisa? How can we receive our blessing? To live in that high vibration of trust, right? Of to, to change how we think. And because our thoughts, we've been told in this it, it, since, you know, Einstein, come on, we know that the power of our thought is what's going to bring it about. And we think if we think about what we don't have, the subconscious just manifests more of what we don't have. And so by living in the trust that good things can happen for us really changes us how we, ha changes how we think and feel on a daily basis. So let me, let me give you an example. I was working with a client he was really struggling with business and being positive in his business. And like the negative chatter just could not turn off a night. And I don't know if anybody on here just has negative chatter, like, you know, and it's out, the negativity outweighs the positivity. And we have to be aware to even be aware of that, right? Because it can, becomes so part of us. But I went to bed one night and I'm just like, I, I gotta know, like, guides, God, help me. Like, how can I help this individual stop this? Because if I, if it's happening for him, it will happen for other people. And I want to be able to help other people. I wake up at 2 AM. Okay. And I know what it is. And I get up and I write it down and my guardian angels just like, get up, write this down. And it's cancel, cancel. Only love is spoken here. And you might see it up here on my behind me. But what this is, is a pattern disruptor for the unconscious to help repattern the brain. Because what happens is we begin to trust that we can't change. And so there's literally, I call it a fear of change. It can be over little things or big things, real things or imagined things. We get used to how we are, even in the negative. So this is how you do it. When the negative thought comes in, you say, cancel, cancel, only love is spoken here. You can just say it in your mind. And you will be surprised. You could say that thing 3000 times 
and over and over again. But what will happen is the subconscious really does want to help you. And so if you teach it that that thought is not a positive, loving thought, it will stop giving it to you. It's only trying to help you. It just doesn't understand the truth from the lie. Cancel, cancel, only love is spoken here. Write it down, put it in the car, stick it in memos and just start repeating it when you get a negative thought. And you will think of me, you'll think of my guardian angel and you'll say thank you because over time, this so works to retrain the brain. Did he get better? Did he stop? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Cancel, cancel, only love is spoken here. Yep. So we're going to bring some male energy. We haven't had a man yet. Let's do so it. Let's do it. And we're welcoming Robert to do the dream. Great to have you. And Hi, if you will unmute yourself and connect with Lisa. Welcome to the show. Hi, Robert. Hi. Uh, Audio is good. Audio is good. I can hear you. Okay. Tell, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, first and foremost, I have a, I'm a guitar player. <laughs> Started playing guitar when I was about 11 and uh, gone, gone through uh, the heavy metal days, the new age days, the um, all kinds of stuff, Spanish stuff, uh, playing in, in coffee houses and restaurants yeah. and no, never really got super famous or super successful, but, you know, did well enough to be satisfying to myself. And, and now okay. I, I have an excellent project with a uh, female vocalist and uh, it's, it's coming along very nicely. Um, <clears throat> but what, what I was really fascinated about, it, uh, I've, I've been kind of tracking your conversation here. I, I noticed that uh, you, you, you seem to be very involved in uh, tracking possible ancestral traumas mm -hmm. or ancestral mm -hmm. influences that might be, uh, you know, giving us things that, you know, might not improve our lives. And, and hopefully, you know, if there are such things, I don't know if there are, I know sub such things may well exist on the subconscious level and might not even be aware of them, but mine involve, <clears throat> or if there are any at all, or, you know, I, I could have just, it could be, coincidence but well, who knows we'll we'll figure that out I, i'm sure i i have questions around my ability to make good financial decisions and there have been a number of times in my life to where if i would have made a decision other than what i made i would have you know ended up being very mm -hmm. successful and very relaxed financially and could live in a you know very comfortable state of retirement and travel mm -hmm. the world and be doing exactly what i want to do but instead i made the wrong decision. And that's happened enough times to me to where it really makes me wonder what's going on. Because I'm, you know, fairly smart person. I do generally pretty well at whatever yeah. I decide to do. I've had different kinds of jobs in the corporate business. I worked for Disney for 11 years. I'm in the, working in the financial industry right now, doing okay for myself. And, um, at the same time, there have been, as I look back on my life, there have been certain points, even starting from when I was in my 20s, yeah. that if I would have made a different decision and just shifted the path a little bit, you know, I, I could be, you know, li living a very, very comfortable life financially right now. And this and the pattern has repeated. So I'm very baffled yeah. by that. You're doubtful by what? I'm, I'm baffled by it as well. Oh, I'm you're saying. baffled. Yeah. Yeah, and rightfully so, because you're very bright. And um, so let's figure it out. Let's unwind this, okay? Um, childhood feels to me that um, it was complicated, maybe complicated with your mother, okay? Now, you might say, well, how does that pertain to my work right now? Well, because... I think she did, asked you a lot of questions. She questioned you. She questioned what you were doing. She questioned if you were doing the right thing. Like she questioned what you were, she questioned you. And um, so what that does in that, when that happens is it creates a pattern within us. All right. That sometimes we'll just do something because we can do it. And it might be that it doesn't feel bad, but, you need, but it might be hasty. And I'm not saying you made all your decisions hasty, Rob. I'm unwinding it with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because you're very bright, you're spiritual. Um, you meaning meaning you just really you you really want to figure this out. You're you really are on a journey 
to connect to, to source energy, universe energy. You really want to figure out who you are, why you're here and what you're supposed to do. And you're really on board letting what doesn't work go. All right. And so I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about how passionate you are. Like, it's really obvious to me that, that you've been doing this, you've been doing the work. And so now you're like done with it. So let's figure it out here. Okay. Part of it is the relationship with your mother. Now, this is the deal. You can't blame your mom. This is the family, family dynamics. Your mother, your mother gave you a better life than she had. Okay. And, mm -hmm. and she, then how she was treated. So it just is what it is. Like, she never got to give her opinion. It's just, she had a, it was, it was more just know that she's, she loves, she loves you. She wanted, she tried her best. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm concerned that for you, that this keeps happening and I'd love to help you clear it. Okay. So how about we do it? How about we work on it? Absolutely. All right. Because I think uh, it's a, a little complicated. Anything else well, you want to well, tell me? Well, so, well, since you mentioned uh, my, childhood and, and parents, I'll, I'll throw a little something in there. Okay. I'm not sure if it's relevant, but uh, why not? Uh, my mom was a school teacher and my dad was a principal. And <laughs> as, as we know, especially back in the days when I was a kid, yeah. they didn't make a whole lot of money. Right. So, so they're both very smart people. They could have gone into some kind of business or some other kind of type of careers, accounting, mm -hmm. lawyering or whatever, and done very well for themselves or, or started some kind of a business and done very well for themselves financially. But yeah. because they loved working with kids, both of them, mm -hmm. they chose to make that financial sacrifice. So we, uh, we were you know, middle class, we never went hungry or anything like that. And we did some camping trips and some family mm -hmm. vacations, all that, but we didn't have a lot of money. Right. So I wasn't, I wasn't raised in an environment where I was coached about financial success, mm -hmm. although they did encourage me to go to college. They didn't encourage They encouraged me to go Good. do very well in high school and all that. And when I decided I wanted, wanted to play guitar professionally, rather than be a lawyer or an accountant, they actually supported that to Good. their great credit. So they sent me to a music right. school. Uh, instead of going to a traditional college, which was really cool. Very. But there was still all of this kind of stuff around money's not that important, Rob. Mm -hmm. What's important is you do what you want to do and that you're happy in life and that you, you help other people. So they, they taught me a very good vibe, but they also taught me that you know, money's not everything. Right. You know, that kind of thing. Right. I think you get the picture. I do get the picture. Okay. I do. And you have good parents. Okay. Yeah. You have great parents. So um, let me get connected and we'll go from there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Accessing 100% spirit, accessing 100% soul for Rob or anyone else. If you are in agreement, Rob, with me connecting and releasing, say yes out loud. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, Because you're so aware, right? Some of these things might not seem, they might go, really? There's an unworthiness going on. So let's just start with that, okay? And it has to do with, um, it's like you're good enough with what you have, so you don't need more. That's an unconscious belief, which makes sense if your parents instilled in you that enough, like just be happy, be a good balanced person, okay? So let me work on that. Let me tell you where it comes from though. This is more on your dad's side than your mother's side, okay? It goes back more than five, 10, nine, eight, seven generations, okay? It doesn't mean it showed up the exact same way, all right? It doesn't just don't hold an attachment to, to that, except that it does fit in that he could have done more. Yours is around unworthy of more money for you, okay? So let's go there. Releasing unworthy from the DNA tissues, fibers, and tapestry of your physical body. Releasing unworthy on all levels and dimensions from your father, going back seven generations back to the originator. Releasing unworthy of having more, Rob. Unworthy than having more than your parents who worked hard, who supported you, who loved you, who gave to you. You're with me? Releasing the subconscious block to making an immense amount of money more than your parents. Clearing this on all levels and dimensions as any subconscious belief that you are, that, you know, 
you are getting it easy or that you're earning it easy. So clearing a subconscious belief around your worth to more and what more means and what more looks like to other people, clearing the energetic attachments to the opinions and judgments of others, which is very interesting. It's more around family, okay? And clearing that on all levels and activating your ability. I'm going to go back in. I'm not done. Activating your ability to create abundance with ease, with flow, activating your money ceiling to expand, that you might be able to expand financially, allow money to come to you, allow money to grow with you, for you, with you, right? And also releasing, um, it, it's, a, it's a sense of a, you're not indecisive. You're very good, Rob, at doing what you want to do. Like if you know what you're, you want to do, you're really good at standing in your truth. It's more that you, it's, you sabotage, okay, in some of these exactly. quick decisions. Yeah. So I'm, I do sabotages a little bit differently, all right? I find the positive of what you're sabotaging. And then we'll clear it. Okay. So um, sabotage. It's a sabotage on empowerment. Okay. And it can be an empowerment with money. It can be an empowerment in your career. All right. So I want you to repeat after me. Even though I, Rob, have this judgment. Even though I, Rob, have this judgment. On empowerment. On empowerment. I rob deeply and profoundly love. I rob deeply and profoundly love. Respect, accept. Respect, accept. And appreciate myself now and always. And appreciate myself now and always. Beautiful. I'll take it from here. Releasing the sabotage of your financial empowerment, of your business empowerment, of your life purpose empowerment. Releasing the sabotage on empowerment, where it causes you to make hasty decisions around finances, where it causes you to, to do things impulsively. Releasing the sabotage on your financial abundance around your decisions, where they're hasty, where they're, where they're quick right? Clearing this on all levels and dimensions as it doesn't serve your highest good. Now, we're going to repeat it because I'm going to integrate it, okay? Mm -hmm. Because it is supposed to be happening. So repeat after me. Even though I, Rob, have this judgment on empowerment. Even though I, Rob, have this judgment on empowerment. I, Rob, deeply and profoundly love. I, Rob, deeply and profoundly love. Respect, accept. Respect, accept. And appreciate myself now and always and appreciate myself now and always. Okay, great. Activating your soul's empowerment, Rob, activating the high vibration of money flow and ease in being decisive in like having clarity around your financial decisions, clarity around your money. It is in your divine right, Rob, to honor your money, activating an increase of self-respect with your money. Now, just roll with me on that, okay? Mm -hmm. That you might allow it to grow, that you might be patient with it, activating your clarity, your wisdom around money, around growth strategies, and that you might feel confident with money, meaning confident having money grow, confident having money expand. It is in your divine right to have more, all right? And it is in your divine right to have a, a positive relationship with money in all aspects of your life. Hmm, that's feeling better. How's it be feeling on your end? Fine. Yeah, nice. you're, very, you're very intuitive. So that's why I asked that is you're very good about knowing what works and what doesn't for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else? Oh, I could go on and on and uh, on, you know, different subjects, but, uh, you know, this has been great. So, so I appreciate it. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Thank you for calling in and keep up with your music. Absolutely. No doubt of that. Yeah, because Rob, music raises your vibration. It allows, music allows the rest of the world to fall away for you. Music allows healing for you. Music allows connection for you, right? And, and so like you playing music is really your genius zone. And I, and money can come through music too. That would be very nice. That's what mm -hmm. we're uh, definitely working on, my, we okay. being my, my partner and myself. Uh, so if, if there's anything you could do to give us a little boost toward that, it would be yeah. most how welcome. I, <laughs> how about I activate some visibility? Okay. okay. Yeah. 
is this your partner in love and business like in music like is this a in relationship mu in music and in love yes okay yeah i i feel that here we go activating visibility in music activating your voices for you and your partner to get out in the world in a bigger way activating a deeper connection between the two of you that you might be unified in your voice in your music in how you impact people and the and the environments that you'll be in replacing this activating on all levels and dimensions that you might be seen known and heard that you might be comfortable with more visibility comfortable with an increase of financial abundance comfortable within yourself to allow these things to transpire with ease and in flow activating acceptance activating an increase of opportunities in the music world in your career okay and in all aspects of your life there you go and Wonderful. you are complete awesome mm -hmm. thanks you're welcome And that would be back to me. Wow. I was just, um, I'm still marinating <laughs> that. It's really lovely. Um, Thank you. I really uh, am grateful that people will be, are transparent and they're open and um, I, I, cause I love helping. So yeah, clearly. And thank you for your generosity. You're spending so much time with everybody. And You're I just welcome. want to acknowledge, Amy, I see that you've written. I don't know if we'll be able to get to you because we have quite a few people uh, before the end of the show. But just know, keep watching, keep listening, because I am receiving. I can promise you I am completely closing my eyes and letting all of this come through me. So do the same so you can receive the gifts being offered right now from Lisa to each person and to all of us. So I'm going to bring the next person on, um, patiently waiting. We've got Patty here, and uh, welcome, Patty, to the show. It is so great to have you. Welcome to Dare to Dream. And to Lisa Thomas. Hi, Patty. Hi. Thank you for calling in. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> Hi, Patty. <laughs> Sweet. I caught I got caught up on the Facebook watch listening to the one that was on before so <laughs> ah <laughs> perfect well Patty you're not your name has a nice ring to it all right mm -hmm. it's just a nice it just has a nice vibration to it tell me a little bit about yourself thank you um gosh that's such a I don't know what to say when people ask me that um it's a hard one I it get is. It. There's so many things. All right. Tell me where you are right now. How can I help you? And then I'll ask clarifying questions. Okay, great. That's much more specific. Perfect. Um, I wanted to tap into and work on, um, I'm, I'm in the midst of a big up leveling in my whole life, my business, my relationship with my partner. Um, and I guess I wanted to be kind of succinct. So what came up for me was like opening up to receiving um, the abundance that I know is possible, receiving mm -hmm. the community that I'm meant to be leading with the work that I do. Tell me what you do. I, I work with women. I empower women to live orgasmically okay. by including their bodies in their life. I'm really Perfect. passionate about empowering the bodies on this planet because <laughs> we're on this planet with these bodies so that's right really you know be in the magic and possibility that's available with having a body mm -hmm. specifically feminine bodies mm -hmm. and then uh, my partner works with uh, masculine bodies okay um so you're a team in love and business yes beautiful okay yes and um the last couple of years have been challenging um, financially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I'd like to blame it on the pandemic, but I, I'm not going to because I was really it's okay. Yeah, I was really like I think I I made the most amount of, the most amount of money I had made in one month, and then like it just all kind of started going downhill from there, mm -hmm. and I can feel the opening now of that abundance being here, me willing to receive it, and so that's mm -hmm. kind of 
in a nutshell. You got it. Do you do couple retreats? Not yet. You will. Yeah. Okay. So really as a, with your partner, think about what would a couple retreat look like? Mm -hmm. Okay. And don't pay attention to COVID right now. Okay. Because the truth is people want help or they want to get out and, and things are shifting now. So pay it like, what would a couple retreat look like for you? Mm -hmm. Start really just letting that marinate. Um, what would you two want to do, right? At a retreat, think about that, right? But facilitate, you two are very good facilitators and people do respond well to you and they wanna learn and they, and they look to the two of you for what that example is, all right? That you live in that, that the two of you reside in this beautiful orgasmic energy where you own your power and you, and, and you help others. And so that's very alluring. That's very attractive to people. OK, mm -hmm. because they want that same type of relationship. Yeah. Right. So that is something yeah, that I really do think you'd be great at doing the two of you. Thank you. Yeah, I think we'd be great at doing it, too. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that is the where the business is headed. Right. How to Good. create orgasmic relationships. <laughs> yep. Good. Glad I was on there. Yes. yes. <laughs> Right on. So I guess, I mean, for, you know, quote unquote, healing purposes, right? Uh, is there anything that we need to clear that I need to clear to receive? Yeah, um, you've got struggle going on, Patty. Mm -hmm. It's like business has to be a struggle. Life, ha you have to earn it, right? You've, you've got to do all, you know, like the funnel and invest. And there's just, there's an internal struggle that's a little bit like, um, You've been on a hamster wheel for a while yeah. and you're, you're just kind of over it. So how do you move forward, but live in a different paradigm? How do you get to experience it differently than how it's been? Yes. That's that you're in a learning curve right here, Patty. And I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I know that yeah. you are aware you're in a learning curve, but let's shift how, how that feels like a mind shift to what does it get to be now? Mm -hmm. Right. We're going to do something that we get to do together and we can do it however we want. And we don't have to do it traditionally. We don't have to launch traditionally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's around, it, it doesn't matter what somebody tells you, you get to do it the way you want to do it. Yeah. And that's been a lot of the journey in the last mm -hmm. year yeah. is sort of letting go of the old paradigm of launching and what mm -hmm. does, what would be fun for me and what can it look like? So all of that for sure. Yeah. And I, I get it that I'm totally in that space of how I yeah. was doing it before and what do I want to do in the future? And you also don't want your work taking all your life. Right. Yeah. That's the other thing. You have a gift of working, meaning working comes natural to you, by mm -hmm. the way. Yeah. It just does. And, but you're at a point where how can you embrace this natural gift of of operating, right? And give yourself permission to relax. So we need to, I need to work on here and help you clear the all or nothing. Yes. Okay. So here we go. You on board? Yes. Let's do it. It's to relax. Let's okay. do it. <laughs> accessing 100% spirit, accessing 100% soul. If you are in agreement with me, connecting and releasing, say yes out loud. Yes. Beautiful. Releasing the pattern of all or nothing, Patty, clearing it on all levels and dimensions, the all or nothing, like the, the on or off switch, right? So let's just um, cling off that off switch, okay? And activate flipping it on for you, okay? Mm -hmm. So releasing the fear of being, of overworking, the fear of not having your, your um, you know, your opportunities arise after you do so much work. So releasing a subconscious anyway, believe, fear of being let down, of not having your hopes and dreams come to fruition. Clearing the illusion, Patty, that it has to be hard. Unwinding those complicated little energy cords that, is an, that are an illusion of what work is and how it has to be and how it has to show up. And even there's around having to put money out and there's some truth in that, right? When it comes to launching. So, but I'm still, on, I'm, let's just still continue to unravel that. And the belief that it has to be hard, complicated, or a struggle. Releasing the all or nothing around finances, around bringing money in, 
releasing the uncomfortability with ease because of a deeper belief that you have to work hard to earn it. Mm -hmm. Clearing the energetic and attachments to the opinions and judgments of others and how they perceive. And now, Patty, you know this better than anybody, dear. I do. Okay. Like, you know this, like you live in this, you teach this. Yeah. And yet it, it's just, it's impacting you right now. There isn't just give, you know, like I told somebody else, give yourself some grace here, right? Because you're really up leveling right now, Patty. You're not, it's, it's like you're in this, in this time where you're just reevaluating what's important to you and how you want to do it. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But here you like, I'm going to clear a subconscious belief around being too powerful, too empowered around women. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a dichotomy for you. It doesn't work for you, Patty. Okay. Yeah. So releasing the feeling of being disempowered in your own energy where it's holding you back, releasing the energetic attachments to being too much, too, too big for your britches, clearing that on all levels and dimensions. That's generational. And that is among women in your generation, by the way, in, I mean, in your lineage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Clearing it from the, from the DNA tissues and fibers and tapestry of your father, of your physical body, from your mother's, your mother's mother and your father's mother, feeling disempowered as a woman, only being able to go so far. And then that's it. Mm -hmm. And that's not, that's not your truth. Mm -mm. Okay. Yeah activating your empowerment, your female power, your female ability and your tenacity and that, and that movement forward for you of knowing that it is in, divine, in your divine right to stand in your power, to help people individually and as a couple, activating an increase of energy for you, <laughs> activating your, your ability to take action and, and really activating your heart, that creative space. Ah, I know, clearing creative insecurity for you, Patty. Mm -hmm. Wherever you are creatively insecure right now around what's next, around what, what it appears to be next, how you're envisioning it, how you have been and how it needs to change. So releasing the fear of changing the process because of the way it's always been, okay? Mm -hmm. And activating your creative confidence, your creative security, and your ability to deepen your relationship with your partner to be able to impact other relationships in a positive way, okay? Yes. Ooh, that feels good. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Powerful. Perfect. Wow. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You are very <laughs> welcome. It's kind of like mic drop on that, and you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, you are welcome, Patty. <laughs> Bye for now. Oh, bye. Yeah. Excellent. So nice. So nice. And I'm even watching, um, for those who are listening to the podcast and you'd like to see the beautiful Lisa and this work, go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. I'm also concurrently doing something I kind of never do, but because I am doing this also live on Facebook and I, I see someone writing there and you know, thanks for the comments. It's so great. Uh, Lisa, I want to ask you for people who would like to activate a healing because mm -hmm. people have been writing this is landing for me. So yeah. they've been receiving for sure. Good. What is possible with your beyond cellular healings? What is possible? Yes. Tell me how do people work with you? Oh. I know you run, you have a lot of offerings. I do. Give us, give us a buffet here a little bit. Well, if you are a healer and you want more tools to go deeper with your clients, I teach once a year. I have an, an enrollment for, for a class that I teach private. I teach myself. Okay. And then if you're looking for healing, there's a couple different ways. There's three different ways. I have healing audios that are very unique to my style, to, to really connecting with the subconscious. And you can just listen to healing audios. Okay. They're not, it's not like a be in Zen mode thing. Like you, you, I take you through a visualization to create change in the brain first, and then I connect and I release like I'm doing right now. All right. They're very powerful. The second way is I have a group program. My group program is a combination of audios because I want you to have, I want you to feel empowered to heal on the go. 
as well as I do a live once a month where I will do clearing and I, cause I want to give my clients more. I have practitioners that have been certified for a couple of years. I only roll this out to people that have been doing this and it's their business in my world. Then you get a 30 minute session, private session with a healer that, and they're all good. They're all vetted by me. Okay. That's the second way. And then the third way is you can become a private client of mine. I have a bit of a wait list, right? But I, I'm passionate about what I do. I've never been happier in my life. Like that's what I want for everybody in my life. Everybody that comes to me, I want them to live their best version of themselves. And so you can get on my calendar to talk and see if that's a right fit for you. Beautiful. And that's Lisa Thomas, energyhealing.com. Yes. Can you give us a ritual or a daily practice that you recommend to keep us clear, clean in the best form possible? I'd really start with your mindset. Absolutely. Cancel, cancel. Only love is spoken here when you go into the negative mindset. Okay. And really just know that everybody on planet earth right now really is being called to look at how they live their life. So if you're feeling uncomfortable, it's for a reason, right? So what in your life could you let go of or do differently? And maybe you just start driving home a different way. Maybe you go to a different grocery store. Maybe you, you know, start making your bed or don't make your bed. Get out of a routine, right? So that you can start feeling into something else. This How's is that? a dream. It's beautiful. Mindset is everything. Yep. What is your mindset going forward uh, for Dare to Dream? What do you next Dare to Dream, Lisa? I know, that's a great question, right? It's like, how can I help? Um, how can I help planet Earth transform, right? So how can I help more people help more people? That's really what I love doing. How can I, how can I do that? How can I educate people? How can I help people understand who they are? That's what, I love envisioning that. Great. Do you mind if I come into your space for a minute? No. Activating. <laughs> I'm being Lisa right now. You're so cute. <laughs> You're so cute. I see that for Beautiful. you and for us. Yeah, I really do. The world so needs this level. It's, it's beyond ready and desirous. So all these beautiful bumps that completely spill us over into who we are, why we're here, really completing our mission and having fun and being happy. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. We need to have joy in our life. We need to feel purposeful. We need to feel like we're contributing to the world in a way, however that is for each individual. And then you're going to feel joy. If you don't feel purposeful, it's hard to feel joy. Anything you want to say here at the end? Yeah. I just want to say that I believe in humanity. And I believe that we can feel peaceful and calm in the world going around that's even in the world that we're in. And I believe that there is more possibility because I have yet to work with somebody that there isn't more for. And so I believe that that is for everybody. I have to believe that way. I do believe that way. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming on the show again. You're welcome. As always, total pleasure. I love being here. I love your tribe. And I'm really grateful to people that called in. Yeah. As well. Yeah, you did a great service for everybody. So thank you. And thank hey, maybe you. we'll need to do this again. <laughs> so that's Lisa Thomas, energyhealing.com. And I end today's show with this quote from PSYcom.net. Trauma can leave a chemical mark on a person's genes, which can then be passed down to future generations. This mark doesn't cause a genetic mutation, but it does alter the mechanism by which the gene is expressed. This alteration is not genetic, but epigenetic. You can subscribe to the Dare to Dream show to hear this number one weekly transformation conversation. Go to Apple Podcasts and seek out Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger or youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. My guest next week is none other than William Henry. William Henry is the creator of the History Channel's Awakened Aliens. And William will be talking to me and to us about the transformative sacred science of human ascension. Thank you everybody for being here today. And remember, cancel, cancel, only love is spoken. <laughs>